So iOS 18 has just dropped and I wanted to go through a bunch of things that the iPhone has just received in terms through this update that Android has had for, in some cases, years and years and years, maybe almost a decade at this point. And it's pretty crazy that the iPhone is just getting them but I still wanted to go through a bunch of them, so let's do it. Now, before I start the video, I do wanna mention that all the AI features at the time of making this video are not ready for baking. You can't, they're just not ready for usage, really, for the most part, in this phone. There's some AI stuff, but most of it is like the, the real meat and potatoes of what we we're hoping and wanting just isn't ready, so keep that in mind. All right, so the first one is removing the names of the categories and apps from your home screen. So all you're gonna do is press and hold on an empty spot, hit edit at the top, go to customize, and if you choose large icons, it automatically gets rid of the names of your apps and your folders and stuff like that to make it, I guess, a little bit more cleaner. Obviously, it still says banking in there, which is fine, which is something I would want, but otherwise, it does get rid of all the names of the icons and all that. So continuing on with that, let's go back in here and go back into edit. The next one is be the ability to change colors of your home screen. I'll show you what I mean by that. So if you go to customize again, you have right down here, I can go from automatic to dark to light and it changes the colors of the icons. But you can also go to this and you can really change it to pretty much whatever you want. You can just drag it right here. It changes the, the apps and all of the folders and stuff to that specific color that you're choosing. You can choose the different shades if you wanna make it a little bit you know, darker red or lighter red, whatever you want and everything in between. You also have the option to press this little picker, color picker, and it takes it from your, your wallpaper and you're like, you know what? I really like the, the pink color up here and it'll change it all to that. So you have that option as well. Nothing too crazy, but you know, Android does have this as well on the home screen. Uh, so it's had it for, I think a year or two at this point, but yeah, it does have it. So kind of cool, I guess, if you're in on the iPhone, you def definitely get a little bit more customization. Next, you can resize your widgets a little bit easier now. So I'll just add one real quick. I'll add this one, I'll drag it down here actually. So there you go. I can drag it a little bit easier. You can already do this on, uh, on Android as well, obviously. Uh, but if you want, you can now do it on iOS too. So it has, it gives you that ability to resize your widgets. The next one is actually pretty cool. You can hide your apps and you can do this on Samsung Galaxy phones and other Android phones as well. So we'll just find an app here that we want to, to hide and maybe we want it to be my Google Home app, just for instance. So I'll choose that. And what I can do is require Face ID and you can see hide and require face ID. If I choose that, I'm gonna choose this. And then it, you can see right here, it says this app will no longer be visible on your iPhone except in a few places such as settings, face ID will be required to reveal open or use Siri with the app. You can see obscured app icon name and no app notifications or calls. So I'm gonna hide that app. Now, an easy way to find is if you go to the, your app library, go to the very bottom, you're gonna see your hidden apps. And if someone taps on that, they have to have your face ID in order to be able to see it. And um, you can do that. You can also, if you don't wanna just hide the app, maybe you just wanna, you know, kind of block the app from being used from like a, a kid or somebody else that's, you know, using your phone. Like uh, all you gotta do is press and hold on the app and I can do require face ID and I can choose this top one, require face ID and that will stop the app from being used. It still will be there, but like say someone tries to open up my Twitter, and you can see it needs Face ID to unlock the app. But then also, if you wanna remove these apps, all you gotta do is press hidden, and then press and hold on the app. Oops, press and hold on the app. Don't require Face ID, and then use your Face ID to get it removed. Now, Control Center is what quick toggles are on Android. So you would just swipe down from here, and you can customize this a little bit. You can press and hold this and this expands anything that you have open. Pretty similar to what uh, Android kind of has. It's a little bit different. But you can also, now you have these like little categories, which is again, a little bit different. I guess you could give app a little nudge on here for being, again, a little bit different than how the uh, Android side is. But you have like little categories. They have music, your home stuff, um, 
whatever that is. <laughs> your, I guess your Wi-Fi, your connected devices, stuff like that. So kind of cool that you have that. And uh, you can add things to this if you want. So if I uh, press and hold, I can add a control now. I can remove them, but I can also add more controls. Like maybe I want a dark mode control in there. Maybe I want the ability to do a quick voice memo. And then when I'm done to swipe up, and now I have that as a, as a quick control. So kind of cool that you can control that a little bit easier. Lock screen. So we'll go to our lock screen here and we're just gonna activate that. All right, put my uh, code in real quick. Could've used my face ID too there, but ultimately you have customized now. And if I go to lock screen, I have uh, the ability to change these before you had like predefined ones, but now you can actually change these little quick targets. So like maybe I don't want my camera to be one. I'll just hit this plus and I, maybe I want it to open up a certain app. So I'll tap app and it will, uh, open an app for me or I can hit the plus and maybe I want it to scan a code or magnify something or go into airplane mode maybe if I'm always traveling voice control there's a bunch of things that you can you can do on here translate just tap that and then when I'm on my lock screen I'll hit done here so there we go I got my flashlight on you also and then I have this other one for translate if I want to translate something but you still have the option when you're on your lock screen just to swipe over uh, from the left to the right and bring up your camera still. This next one just kind of came out for uh, Samsung Galaxy a couple, few months ago, I guess now, and that is the ability to transcribe your notes. Now, it's kind of hidden in the way that Apple does it. I don't like the way Apple does it, but ultimately, if you don't open up your notes app, once you're in your notes app and you're gonna have to start like a new one or go into an existing note, I'll just start a new one real quick here and I can write something or I can hit this little paper clip. And when I do that, I can record audio. Hey everybody, I hope you're doing great. Let me know what time the meeting is at and when it is, I'll let you know. When you hit done, it does transcribe it. So I can press on that and then hit this and it transcribes your recording for you. It doesn't go as far as well, at least currently it doesn't. It doesn't go as far as the way Samsung Galaxy does where Samsung Galaxy will actually separate the different voices that it hears and transcribe it that way. Uh, but it's still here and it's, you know, at least you have some kind of transcript transcription uh, for recorded notes. So there you go, you know, a bunch of things that are already on Android and, but it's still, you know, better late than never. Um, the next thing I would love to see is multitasking, being able to run multiple apps on your iPhone. I, don't see why they don't do it already. They do it on iPads, but they haven't done it on their iPhones yet. But let me know your favorite feature from this update in the comments down below, and we'll see you guys down the road. Peace.